Hey there, my name is Denver and I'll be your guide on living with leukodystrophy. As a society, we often overlook obscure disorders and diseases that are not commonly found in the general public. This exclusion can be harmful to those affected and therefore it is our civic duty to ensure we help disseminate these uncommon diseases. A perfect example of a lesser known group of diseases are leukodystrophies. Even though this is a disease that affects more than 40,000 people in the U.S. alone, it still does not garner extensive attention from the media or the general public. The National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke states that the symptoms of leukodystrophy can be difficult to discern at an early age, especially with a variety of types of leukodystrophies that exist. Most often, the symptoms seem to develop and progress in infants or children are problems with walking, muscle tone, which is muscles flexing or going limp, vision, behavior, speech, hearing, balance, ability to eat, and memory. Although there are over 50 types of leukodystrophies, the most common one is known as Krebs disease. In most cases, this disease will manifest in young infants, but sometimes adult onset leukodystrophy is also possible. Leukodystrophies are genetic disorders. This means that we inherit these diseases from our parents and cannot acquire these diseases from anywhere else. The technical genetic term for its inheritance pattern is called autosomal recessive. In this case, both parents must donate a defective gene to their child. This genetic tool, called a Punnett square, shows that there's a 25% probability of two healthy parents having an affected child. However, for our purposes, the details are not important. Just remember this is a genetic disease, and two healthy parents that carry the gene can't pass this disease to their child. So you might be asking yourself, how does leukodystrophy actually work? Within the human body, we have many different special proteins that carry out specific tasks. If any one of these proteins or enzymes are affected, there can be detrimental effects to normal bodily functions. In leukodystrophies, there are malformations and deficiencies in an enzyme called galactosylceramidase. When this enzyme is not working properly, there are issues in myelin development and formation. So you might be thinking, why is myelin so important? Why can't I live without it, or why can't we do some form of transplant to get more? To answer this, first we need to discuss what exactly myelin is. Myelin is a special insulating sheath that protects nerves and electrical signals throughout our body. This includes our brain, spinal cord, and most organs within our bodies. As an analogy, think of myelin as a rubber band that surrounds electrical wires. Without the insulating rubber, the wires are extremely dangerous and cannot work properly. Well, the human body's nervous system is one big electrical circuit. From this, you can see the importance of myelin. You know, myelin means the nervous system cannot function correctly. Without the nervous system, our bodies will shut down. This is why leukodystrophies are extremely deadly or fatal. Inadequate myelin within the body results in a host of symptoms, which leads to a shortened lifespan and early death. Now, when it comes to diagnosing leukodystrophies, the time between initial onset of symptoms and final diagnosis can take very long. For many patients, it can take up to a decade to get a definitive diagnosis, but half of them will remain unresolved. This is because many leukodystrophies share similar observable traits and also are often confused for other diseases, such as cerebral palsy. They also share similar images from scanning technologies, such as MRIs that look at the brain and spinal cord. In some cases, this makes them easily confusable and a misdiagnosis can be life-threatening, so careful evaluation is necessary. For experts to make these diagnoses, they first have to take into account the age that the patient experienced symptoms, what the symptoms are, the family history, and any extra features in the patient's nervous system. After this initial evaluation, if there's a strong indication of a leukodystrophy present, be an assessment to see the likelihood of a genetic cause for the leukodystrophy and if it is treatable. There will also be many scanning images taken of the patient's nervous system through imaging technologies such as MRIs. As well, there will be gene tests that will look at the patient's DNA for abnormalities. These genetic tests are definitive, but it is a very long and exhaustive process. Health professionals do not feel comfortable making a diagnosis until they have all the relevant information. Unfortunately, many leukodystrophy patients have many unmet needs when it comes to receiving treatment. This because treatment is mainly focused on treating symptoms to improve the quality of life for patients rather than providing a cure since most leukodystrophies don't have one. The treatment that has shown relative success for some leukodystrophies is bone marrow transplantation. This is a procedure where stem cells are injected in the patient in an effort to slow down the progression of the disease and reduce the severity of symptoms. This treatment has a better chance of being effective when it's done early before symptoms even show up. What must be kept in mind is that many, if not most, patients will ultimately still see a progression in their disease because this treatment is not a perfect cure. This is where we can help these patients by disseminating leukodystrophy to our friends and families and try to understand their stories. With this, I would like to introduce Mason, a 16-year-old boy living with leukodystrophy. That's right. Yeah. 
Yeah. So if you were to say like, uh, how could society help make things a little more accommodating or um, help you guys cope better with some of this stuff? Like if you had it- It would be really great if they offered things at school, right? So like once you're in um, middle school here, they mm-hmm. offer after school programs um, right. and they don't really have anything there's nothing really for Mason to do after school. So he has to come home. I get him off the bus and then we have to drive him to where, whatever his um, activities are, where, you know, a lot of typical kids, they just go from school to their, their same community. They offer like, you know, all kinds of clubs, even if it's not sports, any kind of club after school, you know, if they could just offer more things where there's, Places where Mason could be a teenager without his mom and dad around would be great. I guess a little bit of like, it's like respite for us and also some independence for him. Is that something you'd want Mason? More time to kind of be a teen and on your own? Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to see changed, you know, around your school or your community or anything that would make life more fun? I like less people. Less people? Less people? Like in the yeah. hallways? Or is it busy? Yeah. Any advice if uh, you were to talk to a new parent now? I guess big thing would be just reach out and look for those groups, right? Uh, yes. And also, um, don't, uh, you know, it's tough because if you look, it's a lot of doom and gloom and your kid's going to be different than everyone. I mean, you know, like you need to educate yourself and get your resources. But like, I mean, if I, my doctors were like, don't look up leukodystrophy because a lot of those kids, they're going to show you worst case scenario with feeding tubes and they do exist. Yeah. There are 10 year olds in power chairs with feeding tubes and all of that. But if I had known that when Mason was one, I probably never would have pushed him this hard. And he's doing amazing. He's doing, you kind of have to blaze your own path, right? Like that's medicine. They could always tell you, oh, well, here's the diagnosis and this is probably what's gonna be like, but you can also kind of blaze your own trail and, and just keep working hard. Thank you for listening and I hope you gained some insight. Here are some resources you can access to further your understanding or to help in finding a cure to leukodystrophy. Thank you.